Recently, the HMNS Adult Education Department embarked on yet another amazing field trip. This time, we hopped aboard a pontoon boat and made our way down Buffalo Bayou for a bat tour of the Mexican Freetail Bat Colony under the Wall Street Bridge. As always, check the video description for links on how you too can join us for our next adventure. But for now, let's set sail and go on a truly fascinating journey from a unique perspective of our beautiful city. As the HMNS YouTube manager, my goal is to make this content accessible and easy to navigate. To be as immersive as possible, you'll start this tour where we did, from the first step on board, and you'll hear some incredible facts about our city on our way to the Wa Bridge Bat Colony. If you'd like to skip ahead to the actual bat portion, feel free to use the timestamps provided. However, I highly suggest just sitting back and relaxing for the duration, as a lot of these facts are truly surprising, even if you've lived here your entire life. Anyway, let's dive in. Actually, don't dive into Buffalo Bayou. It is typically around 10 feet deep, but can fluctuate several feet up or down, really depending on which way the wind is blowing. Quite often, there are sharp branches from fallen trees just below the surface, and given our propensity to unwillingly host hurricanes, there can be even worse obstacles lurking below. For this portion of the tour, Captain Bobby expertly filled us in on some Houston history, including that this downtown portion of Buffalo Bayou was the original Port of Houston until 1914. After that, ships started to become too big for the bayou and the port was moved to where we now know it today. As we make our way down the bayou, we pass under the Milam Street Bridge, which was the first bridge ever built over the bayou back in 1839. We also passed this uniquely broken four-story building. This was actually the Magnolia Brewery until 1935 when a flood ripped it apart. It is now a private residence, which if you're the owner and watching this, I'd love to bring over a bottle of wine and take a tour. Just saying, it's a cool house. Moving along, if you frequently visit downtown, you may recognize this steel art installation. These were installed in 1996, and each giant stainless steel plate is actually the artwork of school children cut into the metal. That's pretty cool if you ask me. Now, have you ever noticed these blue lights dotting the trails and bridges around town? The color actually changes with the current phase of the moon. When they are blue, it is currently a new moon. They change to brilliant white to correspond with the full moon. How cool is that? As we near the main event under the Wall Street Bridge, we learn a few more interesting facts. First, all sorts of animals live in the bayou or near its banks, including alligators and even the occasional bull shark that makes its way to fresh water. In fact, bull sharks have been found as far north as Illinois, as if some of us need a deeper phobia of water. Pulling up to the Wall Street Bridge, deckhand and bat expert Susie lets us know that Waugh Drive is named after Tom T. Waugh, a fallen World War I Marine that gave his life for our country, earning two silver stars for gallantry in the process. She reminded us that it is important to remember his sacrifice, so I will do so here again with a brief moment of silence. While we wait for the bat's triumphant emergence, Susie fills us with more fascinating facts. Interestingly, one of the ways you know the bats are about to emerge is the increased congregation of various predators waiting for a bat meal. Herons in particular have become very wise to the potential buffet and can be seen patiently waiting for their chance. The Wa Bridge itself is not specifically designed to host a bat population, but the box beam design works perfectly as such. The crevices are about three quarters of an inch to four inches wide and about 16 inches deep. Generally, there are about 200 bats per linear foot in these crevices. The colony's baby nursery is mostly to the top left. These Mexican freetail bats normally prefer cracks about half an inch to three quarters of an inch wide, as cracks that size offer the most protection and temperature regulation. Mexican freetail bats are actually the official state flying mammal of Texas and have been clocked flying horizontally under their own power at over 99 miles per hour. They fly more normally around 60 miles per hour or so and exit from under the bridge at about 35 miles per hour. 
Mexican free tails mostly eat moths. This colony consists of around 250,000 bats, and they eat around 2.5 tons of insects each night. When they come back to roost, it's like parking a small car on the bridge compared to when they left. Mexican free tails give birth to about one pup per year per mother. Bat mama's milk is 28% milk fat. Now, for reference, human milk is around 4% milk fat. But bats grow much faster than humans, so the higher milk fat makes sense. Males typically live between 12 and 18 years, while females average around 12 years. Interestingly enough, the oldest bat ever recorded wasn't a Mexican free tail. It was a Brant's myotis bat in Siberia that lived to be 41 years old. That's amazing. Mexican free tail bats do have a youth mortality rate of around 50%. Here's something cool. When large colonies emerge, you can actually see them on Doppler weather radar. They are so immense that the radar sees them as a massive cloud. Bat experts can actually track emergences using weather radar. Neat. Mexican free tails are great pollinators, helping local plant populations grow, and they are incredible natural pest controllers. In fact, just one bat can replace two acres worth of pesticide. Bats are incredibly important to our ecosystem and astonishing to see emerge in person. We have spent some time observing the Wabridge colony, but there are more around Houston, in fact, and you may live nearer to a large colony than you think. One thing I learned as far as which bridges to look out for are bridges with a box beam design. Other types won't work for large bat colonies as they don't have the tiny crevices that bats crave. So if you live near a bridge with a box beam design and it's safe to do so, you might want to think about hanging out nearby around sunset and maybe you'll be in for a show. At any rate, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed taking this tour with us. If you like this video, please be sure to like, subscribe, and share with your friends and family. And feel free to explore the rest of our content. If you want to know more about bats, be sure to visit the Farish Hall of Texas Wildlife here at the Houston Museum of Natural Science. And with that, see you next time, and stay curious.